Yo, what's going on guys? This is Brent again and this is tutorial number four and in this tutorial we're going to talk about angular controllers. So what is a controller? Well a controller is basically where all the magic happens. Typically you have a view which is what the user sees. In our case it's our partial pages and our home EJS file. You have a model where we're getting all our data from, basically our database, our API kind of stuff uh, together. And then we have a controller, which is basically all the logic that is involved in taking the data from the database or from the user, manipulating it in whatever way we want, and then displaying it back to the user via the view. So in this tutorial series, each one of our partial pages is going to have its individual controller. So we're going to have a controller for page one that handles all the logic that's going to be dealt with on page one, and then one that is going to only deal with the logic on page two. So in order to um, create a controller, I'm going to show you the best way, at least I know how. We could just write the controller in a script right here below here, but I'm going to um, create a new folder and I'm going to call it controllers in our JS folder. And then I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it page one controller.js and I'm going to save that. Now if you remember right in our app.js file we created a variable called my app and that is the module or the angular app that we're going to be working with. So in page one controller in order to create a new controller what we can say is my app dot controller and then we can name the controller so we're going to uh, name it page one controller and to the best of my knowledge naming convention is lowercase and then uppercase controller or CTRL or however you want to call it. So there's two things we can do next. We can use implicit annotation which is a little bit easier, a little less words uh, to go with that basically just says this next part would be a function that takes in our um, uh, injection and then we would define everything inside of that. But um, that is subject to minification. It can cause bugs if you minify your code, basically redefining uh, your variables into smaller text or whatever, uh, so the file sizes are smaller. Um, and that can cause errors if you use minification. The best way uh, to go about uh, completing your controller is called inline array annotation. And Quick interlude here. Um, I'm going to continue to say injection when I actually mean dependency injection. We're actually uh, injecting dependencies, not injecting injections. That means we're going to put some brackets here and we're going to tell our controller what, um, what injections we're going to use. So we're going to do scope is our only injection in this one. And then um, we can tell, we, then we can do the function, so uh, scope. So it looks more like this. The first one is the injection name, and then this is putting it into uh, the function. Uh, so we follow order. If there is a, if there is another um, uh, injection, say we have some sort of API service injection, then we would do this over here, um, API, so like that. But since right now we're just going to use one injection, and that's the scope, which is one of the most important things, we're just going to inject scope into our function, and we'll uh, resolve everything in here, basically do our logic. So there's two ways to have our partial page have access to our controller. The first would be to make a div here or some sort of uh, HTML element and call ng controller and say we're going to use the page one controller for this section of div, okay? Let's do slash div. So everything within this block of text uh, would be controlled by this controller. Now there is another way we can do that with our routing system. Uh, so if we go back to apps.route, we can add a controller anytime anybody navigates to a specific partial. In order to do that, all we have to do is say when somebody navigates to slash page one, we're going to load the template and everything in that template is going to be controlled by the controller named page one 
controller. And now we know we'll save that. And now anytime anybody navigates to page one, we don't have to make a div that says uh, use ng controller page one. It's going to use that one as the default. So going back to our home.ejs file, we need to add our JS file for our controller. So we're going to use script source equals uh, JavaScript controllers slash um, home. No way, it's a uh, page one controller dot js and then script now we've added it to our uh, application okay so now we can actually just go ahead and play with our controller let me just reiterate um, or make more clear that the html the partial page now has access to everything in the scope that we uh, uh, play with in the controller so if we change the scope the um, partial page will change um, so what we can do is we can define a variable here we can say scope dot uh, first name equals Brent save that and then in the page here we can just say first name we don't have to have scope because these brackets basically imply that we'll save that then we'll go to our application here first page and you can see now Brent um, is replay or first name is replaced by Brent we can do all kinds of other things as well we can um, we can do math in our um, partial page so we can do um, 5 plus 5 that's really not an example of uh, the controller but let's just go ahead and show you that anyway 5 plus 5 is 10, so you can do math in these brackets. Um, with a controller, you can pass um, an object. So instead of Brent, we can have um, a first name, um, and that will equal Brent. A last name, that will equal Relly. We can have uh, functions. So we can call uh, like uh, define a function here. So function um, destination, um, and then we can do this dot, uh, or we can return this dot first name, and then is running to plus destination. And then, so let's save that, and let's go back to our page here. So we'll do, we'll output our name first. So um, first name, or actually we'll call it, uh, what, what did we call it up here? We'll say uh, user, we'll save that. So now we can say user.firstname plus user dot last name save that and check it good our so we got Brennarelli now actually let's put a little uh, couple a little space in here now we can do something like we can add a break in here I don't know why that popped up let's do um, let's pass our function uh, something so our function is called run and we can say user dot run and then we'll say the destination is home save that reload it page one here so it says Brennarelli it's got our spaces here and then it's executed our function Brent is running to home um, so there you go I mean you can do all kinds of uh, interesting stuff with your controllers and this is just the very beginning lots of stuff that you can pass to the view or what we would call the DOM from our controller um, so with that said I think this we will go ahead and cut this tutorial uh, now um, if you have any questions concerns or um, just plain comments or suggestions go ahead and post them below if you like this video you want to see more hit that subscribe button I really hope you guys learn something and don't worry there's gonna be a whole lot more information on controllers and uh, lots of other little special tools that we can use catch you guys next time